This year, the World Food Prize is awarded to a man whose work is not confined to a single field, but covers several. From the science of plant genetics to the creation of thriving local markets, Dr. Ijeta began his journey in a hut in Ethiopia, where he was born to a mother who was passionately committed to his education. Uh, my name is Gabisa Ejeta. I was born and raised in a very small village in West Central Ethiopia. Uh, it's a very typical rural village where livelihood for people around that is confined to what goes on in the village and in the farm. We are not close to a major town or a major city. And, and so the, it was very basically rural. Most of us were very poor, no schools. Your aspirations and your hopes are, are just limited to what you see on a daily basis. And for a young boy uh, growing up in rural Ethiopia, the, the hope was to uh, someday when you're grown up to be behind the plow. And, and so modern education and so on were, was not in our dreams. My mother had a tremendous influence on me, uh, on my life. Uh, for some strange reason, my mother believed that her son, her little boy, was going to get an education. And then if this boy would listen to her and follow the path that she would lay out, uh, something better would, would happen to her son. And I'm glad I followed her advice and counsel to to stay the course, stay out of trouble, and stay in school, and take advantage of the opportunities. And she erred on the part of giving me the education and not have me as a child labor to provide assistance to her. Even after I finished high school, I wanted to quit and get a job so I could help her. And she said no, and then after college the same way. And so every step of the way, I think she, she erred on the part of giving me that magical education that she thought would change our lives, and sure enough, it did. There was a truly transformative change in my life that had taken place. And that was after I finished grade school, I needed to find a place to go to high school. And the next high school from our home was about 125 or 100 kilometers away. And so that's now within walking distance to go to school there. And I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, my mother said, no problem, we'll just, you know, pick up and move there. As you begin to do well in school, you begin to get self-confidence and you get some notoriety about your performance in school and, and teachers and community members and so recognize you. The whole mindset for me and my fellow students is, it's not all about you. You do this to, to serve the community as well, and the sacrifices those rural Ethiopians made by paying taxes and sending you to school where they didn't have much for themselves. And so you owe it to them to go back and provide some service was really something that uh, was put in my mind uh, in high school and in college in Ethiopia. His achievements have impacted hundreds of millions of people. It's my privilege to announce that the 2009 World Food Prize laureate is Dr. Gabisa Ijeta of Ethiopia. Part of my work that was recognized by the World Food Prize was there was a, a unique parasitic weed that existed in Africa, uh, that still exists in Africa, and takes over a crop. It's very difficult to get rid of and it would stay in the soil for as long as 20 years. He developed and introduced the first sorghum hybrid in Africa in the early 1980s, which was drought tolerant and produced significantly higher yields. In the 1990s, he conquered the greatest biological constraint to cereal production in Africa, the deadly weed, Striga. Why the World Food Prize recognized my work was not for the extraordinary nature of the science that I did, as much as for what I had done after I completed the research. 
and that I did not stop after I got my publication, expressed the results of my work, but I went ahead to see how I can take that technology to make a difference in the life of people. That has been my calling, that has been what I have pursued, and to this day, nothing excites me more than getting that opportunity to utilize what I do to make a difference in the lives of people. Pushing and encouraging young people to get their education, to conduct good science, and then take the results of that science to help people in rural Africa. That's what motivates me, and that has not changed. That has been the one constant in my life. The award is really not a recognition for me. It was primarily a recognition for my mother. And so I am accepting this with a lot sense of satisfaction that there is some recognition, even posthumously, about the contribution that she had made to my life and through my life to my children and those that we, we all try to help. No one would have predicted that a kid from West Central Ethiopia in rural village would attain this level of recognition for the science that he did and the opportunities that he provided to others. And so given the chance that any one of people that we come across on a daily basis, rich or poor, regardless of what background they come, what ethnic group they come, they have the potential in them to someday become somebody by not only attaining excellence for, for, and recognition for themselves, but coming back and providing service and assistance to humanity. That, I think, is, is a good message that should come out of, out of my work. Not everybody is that fortunate that what you do translates to helping people. I think uh, the cliche goes that every life has equal value. And it really is more than a cliche. What separates people with means and without means is really the opportunities that they've had exposure to. Most uh, kids that come from poor families haven't had those opportunities. Kids that grow in poor developing countries don't have that opportunities. People, kids that are growing without parents don't have those opportunities. And so the need for uh, exposing these kids with potentials, with opportunities, and so that they can uh, bring their, op their potential to reality is very important because just like in my life, I was one of hundreds and thousands and millions of rural Africans that have had the opportunity to make something out of my life because I was given the opportunity for education. I was given and the love of a mother and, and the, the strength of a mother to push me. And so any one of these orphan children, among those in number, there may be one, two, five, ten, hundred that could change the world, that could change their communities. And so uh, giving them the hope and, and the potential to, to excel and the means to excel and the means to capture their potential is very important.